Hey folks, it's Mike with Backyard Air Guns. Here today to give you another update on the One Leaf NV400 digital 4K scope. Uh, they just came out with a new firmware update that's really exciting. A lot of people have been asking for it, and I'm here today to, to show you what this new update is. Before I get into the review, if, we, if you haven't done it yet, please uh, subscribe to the channel. It really helps, uh, helps the channel. Okay, so the update for the NV400 is firmware version 7. And what version 7 does to this scope, it adds ballistic calculator built into the electronics of the scope. It's really a big upgrade. So before I get into that, though, just the fact that this scope and one leaf continue to evolve and update the scope even after you purchased it is really a good deal. Okay, so as far as uh, ballistic calculator, I've never used a ballistic calculator, um, but I did research the internet. <laughs> I think I'm pretty well versed now on a ballistic calculator and what the function is. I actually took this out to the range with the ballistic calculator and got some pretty good footage of uh, what it does um, and the advantages it adds to the scope. All right, so let's just talk about what is a ballistic calculator, okay? A ballistic calculator in a scope, all right, basically adjust for different parameters. So for, so for, so for example, range, okay? If I've got the scope zeroed in at 50 yards, okay, but now, I need, now I've got a target downrange at 100 yards, instead of adjusting um, different parameters in the scope or holdover, okay, with a ballistic calculator, the scope will then tell you, okay, if, if you're at zero at 50, and now your target is up, up range at 100, it'll actually tell you exactly where to put the reticle to hit the target. And again, I just use 100, could be 150, could be 350. So basically a ballistic calculator t tells the shooter where exactly to put that reticle based on the parameters to hit the target. So that's really um, a neat feature in this scope. And I'm gonna go through the, you know, the how to set it up and so forth. Um, I shoot a lot of bench rest. Okay, so when I shoot bench rest, I'm well, backyard. I'm shooting 30 yards, and the uh, range I'm shooting at 50 and um, and 100. Not much over. Sometimes, sometimes 200. Okay, but those are all fixed ranges for me. So for a ballistic calculator, the true benefit bit of that is not for somebody that just does pure bench rest. Because on a bench rest, I'm going to go ahead and have a reticle set up exactly at 100, exactly at 50, exactly at 200 and I'll just choose which one. Where the ballistic calculator comes into play is on different targets that you don't know what the range is. Okay, so hunting is a perfect example of where you'd use a ballistic calculator. So I might have the scope dialed in on a hunting rifle at 50 yards, okay? But my target, I look down there, I might see a, a deer or a, a zombie down at 120 yards, Well, you, and it's moving. Well, you don't have time to sight the rifle in, okay, or go to different profiles, you just aim the, the target, the scope and rifle at the target with the range finder built in, it adjusts the reticle, okay, and tells you exactly, you know, where to put the reticle to hit the target at the different range. It's really a neat fe feature for hunting and variable uh, variable distance targets. So that's the that's one of the main benefits of having a ballistic calculator built into the scope. Okay, let me just show you how, to, how easy it is to upload the firmware to your scope. If you already got the NV400, uh, you definitely want to get this, um, uh, get this update. And if you're thinking about purchasing the NV400, it'll probably come with it. But if not, again, you can go to the website and do it. So the first thing you do is you go to the One Leaf website and click on support. And you drill down and you'll see NV400 firmware update. It's a little small file. Okay, You put that file on the SIM card that comes out of your scope. Okay, you simply just download the file off the internet, it's a little bitty file, put it on here. When you put this back in the scope and power the scope on, it'll recognize that file, as long as, it, as, long as the name is the same. In other words, sometimes you'll add a one or two to the file. You gotta make sure that the file name doesn't get added to. And then when it sees it, it'll just go through and you know update itself and restart the scope. And now all you've got all that uh, ballistic calculator functionality built in your scope now. So let me just give you an example of the um, of the options, okay? So again, the nice thing about the NV400 is I can send the output of this to HDMI. So I'm actually recording the screen inside the scope that I can show the viewers. All right, so when you go to your menu, you'll notice a couple things have changed and they've rearranged some menu items. So right down here, 
is now new ballistic parameters. Okay, so I'm just going to click on that, and you'll see one. It's really easy to read. They're all big, bold. Uh, it's 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 a good font uh, and very easy to read. All right, you'll see there's 15 options to accurately set up your ballistic calculator. Now, this might be a little overwhelming, but it's key to get these parameters right so the gun knows exactly where to put your reticle based on the parameters. Okay, so the first one is just on-off switch, okay? So either on or off, so we've got it on, okay? Then this is really neat, ballistics group, okay? So the ballistic group, you've got seven different groups here, okay? So let me give you an example why you want different groups. So right here, I've got a uh, 5.56 NATO round, okay? And it's 55 grain, okay? Well, I might have group A set up for this weight bullet. Then this bullet's gonna have a certain ballistic uh, coefficient. Well, I might wanna use a different bullet. And that group might be under group B. It might be a heavier uh, bullet with a different uh, ballistic coefficient. You just set it up in here. So you can set this scope up for seven different bullets, weights, um, which is really neat and really quick, okay? So that's that's what ballistic group is. So I'll just leave that at A. All right, ballistic coefficient. Now, when I took this to the range of the, the video footage I got, I did not know the ballistic coefficient for pellets. I'm shooting pellets. Um, and I used what's in here, 0 0.029. And when I got back, I'm like, okay, it's off a little bit. I see why now, okay? You really need to know what the ballistic coefficient is of your ammunition before you go hunting, okay? So most of your uh, rimfire stuff, okay, you can easily get that. Um, it says you can look on the box, but here's some uh, Hornaday Frontier uh, 556. It's not on the box. I looked everywhere. It's on the website, okay? So the ballistic coefficient for a 556 NATO round is 0.243, okay? Here's some 9 millimeter. 9 millimeter. These are 124 grains. The ballistic coefficient, again, it's not on the box, but there's a little... QR code you can scan, takes you to the website, and I looked it up and I found that the ballistic coefficient for a 9mm is 0.152. The larger the ballistic coefficient, the larger that number is from 0.0 to 1, the better the, the, the better it is. In other words, the more streamlined the bullet goes to the air without dropping. Okay, so you want a higher number uh, to get a better bullet that stream, streamlines straight through the air. Okay, so now we're talking about pellets. So on pellet packaging, you can't find ballistic coefficient. At least I couldn't. I looked on all the packaging I got. It's not on there. Um, it's not on the website that I went to, but there's an a article out by a Hard Air magazine that details pellet um, you know, ballistic coefficients and also um, um, Air Depot, okay? Those two kind of... Um, share that same article. And I went on that um, site and I found that they've got, they actually list the BC for these uh, JSB 30 grain, 50.15 grains. And that ballistic coefficient is 0 0.055, okay? So I used 0 0.029, so I basically I used half the, the ballistic coefficient when I went out to the range. So now the next time I go to the range, I'll, I'll have that dialed in. Um, I, I shoot bench rest. I mainly shoot the Zan BR100s. Okay, this is a 56 grain pellet instead of a 50 grain pellet. That's about 12 percent more. So I just basically can adjust. I basically calculated what the BC would be for this pellet based on weight. Okay, if you look at the two pellets, they're almost identical except one. The Zan has got this 56 grain versus 50 grain. So that's 12 percent more. So I added 12 percent. And I came up with a ballistic coefficient for the Zan 56 at 0 0.061, okay? So now, now I wanna change that, right? So I'm just gonna go over here, okay? And again, this is so well done. When you click on that menu option for ballistic coefficient, it explains exactly what it is. So again, I'm really impressed with how easy these menu options are to navigate uh, and get around. So I wanna change this to point 061, so I just move this up, okay, or I can come over here and, and do a whole tenth at, uh, at one time, so 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 
0.61, boom. Okay, now I got the right ballistic coefficient in this scope for the next time I go to the range. Okay, ballistic model on your rimfire, the the 5.56 and the 9 millimeter. That's a it's a G1. It says pretty much to always use a G1 if you're not if you're not sure. I don't know what that model is on pellets, um, so I'm just gonna leave it at G1. Okay, bullet weight. This is very easy. Every pellet, every rimfire has got its weight. So again, I'm using a 56 grain Zan. So I've got I've got the weight in there for that. It basically tells you how to get the weight. Okay, initial velocity. I'm shooting these Zans uh, pellets at um, uh, about nine, 890 feet per second. Again, 9 millimeter um, NATO 5.56 go a lot faster, but again, it's got pretty much on the box what the speed is. So you just put the right speed in there. All right, this is important, zero range. So the scope needs to know at what range is, is, is zero, whether, whether it be 50, 100, 25, 75, doesn't matter. Well, zero the scope in at whatever range, okay? And then when you come in shorter or further, it will adjust that reticle based on the range. So I've just got it, this one here, uh, zero range at 50 yards. Okay, sight height. This you want to do before you go out there, but it's not going to change, right? So basically, you take the center of your barrel and the center of your scope, okay, and measure these two points. How, how high off the center of your barrel is the center of the scope. Okay, on this FX Impact M3, it's 3.25 inches. So initially I had that as two, which was wrong. I went back in there and measured it and got it, it correct at 3.25. Okay, shooting angle. Okay, this basically tells you what is the pitch of your rifle. Uh, it says, it's got a default in here at one. I'm just gonna leave that at one. Wind speed, okay. Um, I took a little wind speed uh, tool out to the range. It was running about three miles an hour, um, or 2.2 is what I got in there. And again, if it's windy, you got 10 mile an hour winds, here's where you adjust it. Okay, wind angle. Okay, this is asking for what the angle of the wind is. In other words, if it's 90 degrees, it's coming from basically your right to left. If it's 180, it's coming from your back. If it's zero, it's coming uh, uh, head on to you. It's got this defaulted at one. I just left that at one. Okay, altitude. Uh, you can look this up. You can Google this. Uh, it's got it defaulted at 1643. I think my altitude here in Georgia is more like 1100. Boom, now it's set. So a lot of these, once you set up, you don't have to go back and mess with it. Okay, temperature. Again, get this on your phone. At the, the day I was shooting, it was 48 frigid degrees out there. Barometric pressure, again, a little wind speed um, meter I had also told me what the uh, barometric pressure was, okay? Now, this one here I didn't know, um, but there's a little tools you can get for it. I just left it at 75% humidity. When I got home, I checked the real humidity was 19%, okay? So what this is telling it is how much moisture is in the air, okay? So I had it at 75%, so the rifle's thinking it's got to push this pellet harder to get through all that moisture versus 19%. So it's gonna, it's gonna raise that, that radical up a little bit based on this uh, relative humidity. Hey folks, I moved the range footage to the next video. Again, my goal is to keep all these videos short and sweet. Uh, so I didn't want to prolong this video, but the, the, the next video is, uh, it's just, just the range footage of me actually using the ballistic calculator functionality in the scope. It's really cool and it's relatively short. So that'll be in the next video. All right, folks, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please help the channel out. If, you, if you're if interested in the scope, please use my affiliate link in the description. It's the cheapest price on the internet. Uh, you can have the scope for $4.99. And again, by using my affiliate link, it, uh, it certainly helps the channel out. Uh, please like and subscribe, and we'll be back. Thanks, folks.